Okay, hello and welcome to Buddha Goddess Yoga. Um, today we are practicing solidarity flow. Um, my name is Anne, this is Sam modeling with me today. Um, get some water, blankets, and pillows. Um, we want some support for this flow, so if you don't have pillows and blankets, um, I'll give folks a minute to collect those things. And definitely also have some hydration nearby. So um, as always, because we can't um, see you, we can't respond to your body, please be really intentional with, with your movements, with your poses. Um, avoid pop and snap sensations. Um, if you have any feedback or um, ideas for modifications at the end of the practice, and you want to DM us, we're really open for, for feedback and love that. Um, with our daily yoga, Every day, 10 o'clock, we are taking donations uh, through Venmo, the Glitter Goddesses, or you can DM us um, to send us donations in any other way. All of our donations go to queer and trans uh, families of color. And today, for Solidarity Flow, I'm inviting us to dedicate today's practice to someone you miss. Um, so this can be someone that's passed away, it can be an ex, it could be someone you haven't seen in a long time. Um, maybe a family member or a friend. So take a moment, reflect on that person you miss, um, and we'll dedicate this practice to that person um, with intention. And um, I'll give a little, a little prompt at the end of our flow as well to, to move forward with that intention. So to get started, we'll begin seated. Make sure to sit tall and long. If you have a pillow, you can sit on. Um, or wedge under the knees if you're sitting cross leg, that can feel really good. And we'll start just by rolling the shoulders back to find a nice tall and long spine, find length in the neck. And just take a moment to be aware of the natural breath. And while you're here, you can slowly begin to deepen each inhale and exhale. Maybe slow down and elongate the inhales. And to add some movement to this breath, we can use the knees, kind of give the knees a little bit of a tug to inhale and press the chest forward. You can spread the shoulders wide, open the throat. And on the exhale, you can round the spine, bring the chin to the chest slowly with control. So inhaling to open up, press the chest forward, create some space in the heart and the throat. Exhale to round the spine. Maybe separate the shoulder blades a little bit more, round in the spine, tuck the hips. Inhaling again, slow and controlled to press the chest forward. 
and exhale to round the spine. One more time, inhaling, press the chest forward, open heart, open throat. And then exhale to round the spine, chin to chest. We'll come back to neutral spine and drop the head to the left shoulder. Keep the right shoulder down and back. And keep the slow, steady breath here. Excuse me. And then keeping a tall, long spine, you can drop the chin to his chest. And then we'll roll the head over to the right side, keeping the left shoulder down and back. And from here, I'll invite you just to move slowly with an inhale to the left side. So bringing the head toward the um, chest, moving over to the left side on the inhale. And then exhale, roll over slowly to the right shoulder, keeping that opp opposite shoulder down and back. Continue with this breath, keeping it slow and controlled. Just a few more cycles here. Sinking the breath with movement tells our parasympathetic nervous system that our bodies are in control, that everything is okay, that we can move away from the fight, flight, and freeze part of our nervous system. So really feel into the sensation with each movement as you're breathing. Last cycle of breath, maybe make it your slowest here. And after your next exhale, you can bring the head back to center. We'll inhale to raise the arms up overhead. And exhale, drop them down, the right hand meets the left knee and the left hand is behind us in our backspace. We'll inhale to send the spine long, maybe press the chest forward. Exhale to deepen the twist, turning the chin all the way to the left. Maybe releasing the upper chest, relax in the shoulders to go deep in the, this rotation from the core. Maybe while we're here physically turning back, looking back behind us, we can take a moment to reflect on what we miss about the person we're dedicating this flow to. Maybe thinking back on the memory that we've had with them, our most recent memory. And I'll invite you to release as much as you can on the exhale here. And on your next inhale, we'll raise the arms up and over to move to the other side, left hand to right knee. 
And on the inhale, you can try to sit tall and long as you can. Exhaling to turn the head all the way to the right, completing the rotation. And maybe while we're here, we take a moment to reflect on that same memory with a new perspective. Breathing into the sensation of your twist. Allow a moment of comfort in this pose to be contemplative, to reframe your memory with the person that you miss. And again, release as much as you can in this next exhale. And on the next inhale, we'll raise the arms up and over. As we exhale, we can bow down toward the ground, maybe crawl the hands out ahead of us. Let the head hang heavy here. In a forward fold, it can feel like we're in solidarity. The only thing we view is our own bodies. So take a moment to be with yourself here. We'll take a couple breaths. And whenever you're ready, we'll press back up to so roll the shoulders back. Just draw circles with the shoulders. Maybe using the chest and the spine to extend back. And after this last rotation, we'll keep the shoulders down and back. Bring the arms out wide, spreading the fingertips, and we'll cross the right or the left. Give yourself a big hug. We'll take a breath here to take a moment for ourselves. Maybe hug yourself the way you would the person that you miss. And from here, we'll bend in the left arm, straighten the right, press that right shoulder down, maybe engage outward with the right elbow against the arm, opening up the other shoulder, maybe rotate in the right wrist. And if you have access to it, you want to wrap the right arm around the left to meet hands for eagle arms. We'll just take one breath here, inhaling to lift, and exhaling to press the fists away, and release. We'll roll the shoulders back just a couple times here, and then send the arms out wide one more time. We'll cross the left over the right this time, give yourself a big hug. And again, we'll take a big deep breath here with some intention, imagining we're hugging the person that we miss. Keeping that moment of intention with us, we'll bend in the right arm, send the left long, keep that left shoulder down and back. Maybe rotate in the wrist. And 
And if you have access to eagle arms, you want to take this breath with us here, wrap the left arm to meet the right, we'll inhale to press up, and exhale to press away, and release. From here, we'll bring the right hand to the right side. Pressing into the mat next to us, we'll send the left arm up and over to stretch the left side body. You can bend in the elbow a little bit if it feels comfortable. Maybe it's completely straight and rotate the shoulder forward. Whatever feels good for you here. And we'll move to the other side. Left hand into the mat. Raise the right arm up and over. And come back to center. We'll roll the wrists out before we meet a tabletop. And to, to open up the wrist a little more, you can point the fingers toward your body, pressing into the floor slowly with control. Spreading the fingers wide. Maybe adding some topical heat to the forearms. And when your wrists feel good, you can take a sip of water before we meet in tabletop. And to get in tabletop, I like to suggest a pillow or a blanket beneath the knees for a little more comfort. And here we're working to stack the shoulders right above the wrists and the hips above the knees. And we'll start here by sending the right ankle back, tuck the right toe. You can kind of bounce into this to open up the calf. Sending the heel back, engaging the entire leg. Checking in with our three points of balance. To warm up the lower spine, we'll engage in the lower back by sending the heel up, trying to find a flat line from the heel to the top of the head, keeping the gaze down between the hands, engaging in the entire leg. If it feels good for you, you can come down to your forearm, sending the leg a little bit higher. And if you want to take the challenge, you could bend the knee and open the hip, leaning a little bit more into the left elbow here, maybe rotating the ankle, staying connected to that slow, controlled breath. And if you're here, you can straighten the leg, send it up a little bit higher before you close the hip, bring that right knee down to meet the left, and we'll drop the hips back over the ankles for child's pose. Send the arms high overhead by crawling the fingers forward. Let that um, forehead hang heavy here. Feeling into the sensation of the warmth on the right side. And from here, we'll press back up into tabletop, checking in with the stack of our wrists and knees. We'll send back the left leg, tucking the toe. You can bounce into this to open up the back of the leg.
And checking in with our three balance points again, we'll lift that left heel, finding a flat line, engaging in the lower back, engaging the glutes, press the heel away. And if it feels good for you, you can come down to your elbows, lifting the leg higher. And if you have access to it, bending the knee, you can open up the hip by leaning a little bit more into the right elbow. Rotating the left heel, drawing circles with the toe. And you can go to child's pose whenever you'd like. If you're here, you can send that left leg up a little bit higher, straightening the knee and close the hip. And then bring that left knee down to meet the right. Maybe spread the knees out a little bit more this time for child's pose. Send the hips back over the heels. Maybe spread the arms out wide this time. Allowing the chest some space to reach toward the floor. We'll take a moment here to reconnect with the breath. Sending a long, controlled inhale into the belly. And when you're ready, we'll press back up into tabletop. This time, pressing into the mat with both hands, we'll send both legs back for plank. Engaging in both legs. One modification here is to drop the knees down to the mat. We'll take this moment here to take a couple breaths. And then slowly with control, we're lower down to the mat. Once your chest has met the mat, we'll bring the elbows right beneath the shoulders. So pressing the chest up into baby cold cobra. The elbows are stacked just beneath the shoulders, pressing us up, engaging in the lower back, pressing into the mat with the fingers, with the palms. And then we'll exhale, bring ourselves back down. From here, we'll press the hands, the wrist beneath the shoulders, we'll press back up through plank. You can keep the knees down on the floor here. And then press the hips forward, knees down on the floor, pressing the hips forward, find length in the neck. Locating that lower back warmth, engaging here. And then send the hips up through tabletop for downward dog. You can keep the knees bent here, maybe pressing back to pedal into each heel. making sure that the shoulders are in their sockets, that we're finding length here in the spine, that we're pressing the hips up and away. And when you're ready, we'll walk the hands to the feet for forward fold. We can bend the knees here, allow the head to hang heavy. And let's inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. One more time, inhale to straighten. Exhale to bend. And as if our hands are heavy, we'll roll up slowly from the bottom of the spine to the top. And once you're standing, we can roll the shoulders back, find grounding in the feet.
Let's take a moment to ground ourselves here in Tadasana. You can flip the palms outward. Check in with the ribs being stacked directly above the hips. Sometimes we can press the chest forward or round in the spine a bit. We'll find length in the spine. Send the breath to the belly. Press into the floor with the feet, maybe curl the toes into the mat. Really feeling our grounding here from mountain pose. And I invite you to stand here with mindful breath as long as you'd like. And if you'd like to continue the movement with us, we'll go into some half sun salutations. So we'll inhale to raise the arms up overhead, extend the mountain pose. Exhale, swan dive down to forward fold. We'll inhale, flat back by pressing against the shins, reaching the hips up and back like in downward dog. Exhale, forward fold. And then we'll inhale back up to Tadasana. Exhale to release the shoulders here. Inhale, arms up overhead, extended mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, coming back to Tadasana. And exhale, roll the shoulders down and back. One more time, we'll inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, forward fold, hinging at the hips. Inhale, press the hips up and back, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. This time we'll inhale to extended mountain pose, arms up overhead. Exhale, arms by our sides. We'll take one more moment here, a breath, to be with ourselves standing in Tadasana. From here, we'll take a micro bend in the knees. And again, as if the arms are heavy, we'll slowly roll down the spine from the top to the bottom toward our mat, bringing the hands flat to the mat once we get down. Knees bent. We'll crawl the hands forward until we get into a plank, slowly with control. We'll take a couple breaths here, slow and controlled. Finding the same groundedness we did when we were standing. And keeping the hands and feet where they are, we'll send the hips up and back for a downward dog. Pressing the heels back again, you can pulsate here, maybe figure eight with the hips. And we'll bring our downward dog to stillness. To come into lunge on the right side, we'll send the right heel up, bend in the knee, bring the knee to the chest, and then drop it between the hands. Try to find length in that left leg. Keep the hip, the um, toes tucked. We're checking in with the stack here on our right side that the knee is directly above the ankle. And here we can work to press the left hip forward as the left toe is tucked. Breathing into the sensation in our left hip.
And when you're ready, we'll drop that back heel and burst open into warrior. Check back in with that right leg. Let the knee is stacked over the ankle. We'll flip the front palm, reach forward, and then up and back, stretching the right side body, breathing into the sensation here, maybe opening up toward the ceiling. And then we'll bend in the right elbow, send that right elbow toward the right knee to open up the left side, send the left arm up and over. And then we'll come back to warrior, rotating the torso back up to neutral. We'll flip both palms up toward the ceiling and inhale to straighten that right leg. And then exhale to come back to warrior, sinking in. Inhale to flip the palms up, straightening the leg. Exhale to come back down, sinking in. One more time, flip the palms, inhale. And exhale, sink back into that knee. Check back in with your alignment again before you spiral back down to frame the foot for low lunge. Send the left heel back up. Here I'll invite you to drop that left knee if you can. We'll just take one moment here to try to press that left hip forward. And then we'll float the knee one more time. Pressing into the mat, we'll send the right foot back to meet the left for plank. And if you'd like here, you can take chaturanga or you can go into a child's pose. So pressing up for upward dog or cobra. Tabletop to meet us here in downward dog. And we'll send that left heel high, bend in the leg, bring the left knee to the chest, and then drop it between the hands for low lunge again. Here we're working to press that right hip forward, checking in with the stack here from the knee to the ankle to protect our knees. And when you're ready, we'll drop that right ankle behind us. Burst open for warrior on the left side. Checking back in with our stack. We can flip the front palm, reach forward and up and back to stretch the left side body. Take a nice deep inhale here. And on the exhale, we'll send the right el the left elbow toward the left knee, stretching the right arm up and over. And we'll come back for warrior. Keep the arms long, finding strength. We'll flip the palms, inhale to straighten the left leg. Exhale to bend. Inhale to straighten. Exhale to bend. Inhale to straighten. Finding strength in the legs, exhale to bend. We'll come back for low lunge by spiraling the arms down. Bring that right heel up toward the ceiling again. We'll drop the knee. Just take a breath here to send the right hip forward. We'll float the knee one more time. Send the left foot back to meet the right. And again, you can go into child's pose from here. You can drop the knees, press into your chaturanga, upward dog or cobra, and then tuck the toes and send the hips up and back for downward dog. Maybe we take the full expression of downward dog this time, finding as much length in the spine as we can opening up the armpits toward the feet, keeping the gaze down uh, above the toes, sending the hips up and back as far as we can. Just one more breath here. 
Then we'll release the knees down, we'll meet in tabletop. Checking in with the stack of our wrists below our knees and the knees below the hips. We'll work into some cat cows, inhaling to press the chest forward, reach the hips up and back. Exhale to round the spine for cat. Try to bring the forehead toward the hips, maybe finding some space between the shoulder blades. Inhale, press the chest forward. Reach the hips up and back. Exhale, rounding the spine, chin to chest. Tuck the, tip, the hips in as far as you can. Inhale, press the chest forward. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale, press the chest forward. Exhale, round the spine. One more time. Inhale, press the chest forward. Exhale, round the spine. From here, we'll spread the knees out a bit wider, touching the toes behind us. We'll go back into child's pose, letting the head hang heavy, crawl the hands up overhead. And from here, we'll crawl the hands over to the upper right side. Stretching the left side body, we can stick the left palm to the floor, sending the left hip down and back. Checking in with a slow, controlled belly breath. And from here, we'll crawl through center, over to the other side. Reach the right arm as far as long as you can. And as if it's stuck to the ground, you can pull the right hip down and back. When you're ready, we'll crawl back to center. Let's bring the arms out a little bit wider, so almost into a T. Now I'll invite you here, again, as it feels like we're in solidarity in these poses, holding forward to close your eyes. And you can imagine the face of the person that you miss. Take a couple breaths here to send a breath of love and care to this person. And then we can send the arms back up overhead. And press back up into tabletop, however you'd like to get there. Holding that moment with you, um, we'll come to seated and we'll send both legs out long. Here, if you have a pillow or a ton of pillows, um, we're gonna stack them between the knees, you can use blocks. And just for a gentle forward fold here, you don't have to send the legs out long for straddle. Have them as wide as you'd like. And here I'll invite us just to crawl forward. We can bend um, in the spine 
We can round the spine as much as we'd like to. And just let the head hang heavy and reach our support. So if your support isn't tall enough, you can reach your hands underneath and ball the fists to kind of stack the pillows up closer to your head. Or if you have a big, big enough pillow, you can hug it in close to the chest and rest the head on the arms like this. Either way, we're sending the sensation, stretching out, opening up the lower spine, sending breath to the lower core. When you're ready, we'll open back up, removing the pillow or your support. And we'll bend the left knee in, bring the left sole of our foot to the inside of our right thigh. And here we can walk the hands down toward the shin. We can round the spine, forehead to knee. You can send the chest forward to open up the hamstrings. You can try to reach for the toes if it feels good. And we can press back up. We'll reach the right hand to the left knee like we do in a twist. And instead of placing the left hand behind us, we'll send the left arm up and over. So reaching the fingers long. We can send the torso over to reach toward the toe if it feels good. Otherwise, just reaching the arm long can send that sensation into the left side body, maybe opening the chest toward the ceiling. It can be difficult to find the breath here, slow and controlled. But we can work toward sending the breath again into the core. And on your exhale, you can release. We'll switch legs. Again, as you crawl down over for this hamstring stretch, you can round in the spine. You can press the chest forward. You can reach for the toe, whatever feels good for you. Either way, we're staying with this breath. Let's press back up, bring the left hand to the right knee, twisting open to send the right arm up and over. And release. We'll send both legs out long. Um, the feet can touch here. And then here we'll slowly, coming to elbows behind us, reaching back with the elbows, we'll catch ourselves. And we're making sure we're stacked here. Elbows are directly beneath the shoulders. So try not to sink too back into the shoulders. We wanna find strength here. 
And then we'll press the chest forward, find the space here in the throat, slowly send the head back. Slowly opening up the throat. And fish pose, you can press the palms into the mat. Opening the throat. You can take a moment here to think about something you'd like to say to the person that you miss, who you're dedicating this flow to. One more breath here. To come out of this pose, we'll slowly bring the chin to the chest. And then we'll bring our backs flat to the floor. Opening up the palms toward the ceiling for Shavasana. Just let the, head, the legs hang heavy, let the feet flop open. Coming back to the natural breath. I will invite you to find this moment of comfort. Continue thinking about what you would like to say to the person that you miss. Whether you can or cannot send a message to them, just take a moment with this intention. Sinking into the floor. On your next exhale, I'll invite, just release in the shoulders, let go of any tension in the upper back. Allow the heart to be open. Allow the arms to sink into the floor. Next exhale, you can release the tension in your neck and shoulders. Let the head hang heavier. Allow the hips to release. Bringing your awareness back to the body. We'll take one final breath here in Tavasana. Inhaling slow and controlled through the nose. And exhale a, slap, a sigh out the mouth. Wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes. And crawl over to one side for fetal position. Just to take a moment of comfort before pressing up to seated for closing breaths. Maybe take a sip of water.
And to close, you can have your hands in your lap at heart center or hands over the heart. About a breath for the ancestors that we bring to the space and for the indigenous people who were here on this land before colonization, breathing in and out. A breath to thank ourselves for our practice today, breathing in and out. A breath for the intentions and well being of everyone practicing with us today, breathing in and out. And a breath for that special person that you dedicated today's flow to, breathing in and out. The love and light of you bows to the love and light of you. Namaste. Thank you for practicing with us today. Um, so quick announcement before we end. Um, oh, of course, our donations are welcome. Um, you can DM us or send a Venmo to the Glitter Goddesses. Um, right now we are getting ready um, in the next two weeks, two or three weeks to get ready for um, the Trinity Academy for Performing Arts. Um, dance senior show um, that Garza runs and me and Trent are guest artists for. Um, the House of Glitter work really closely with the Tapa Dance Company and right now we're getting ready um, to release a viral um, senior dance concert and one prompt by Efro Solares, who's one of the uh, Tapa seniors, is to um, send a message to someone that you miss, um, which is why I dedicated, I had our us dedicate to this flow uh, to someone that we miss. So if you'd like to be involved in any way, um, and even if you're not going to get involved, I'm going to invite you to uh, write out a message or to take a video of yourself or just do a voice memo. Um, just a quick short message to this person that you miss. Um, it can be heartfelt. It can include the person's name. It can not include the person's name. You can be anonymous if you'd like to. So. Everything is up to you. If you want to um, contribute in this way, um, it'll be really sweet to see um, our community spaces show up in this way and show up for our, our seniors that have put a lot of work and energy into um, their concepts and into their pieces over the, their six years at school. Um, and so coming down to this where they have to put a little extra work into and um, being virtual and coming together in a really different way. Um, this is one way that I think can feel just really good for us and um, for them just connecting with our, our province community. So if you're able to do that um, and you want to, you can visit tableprovidence.org backslash dance to upload your video or just DM us if you have any questions um, or don't want to deal with the online uploadage of stuff. <laughs> you can just send things to us. Um, yeah, again, thank you for practicing with us today. Have a great day. Okay. Bye. <laughs>